let's get the video going because everyone at home just wants to see my lovely face. <laughs> totally kidding. Okay, lesson 27, multiple. So we are working with least common multiple, least common multiple. So first off, what is a multiple? A multiple, it, uh, so the multiples of a number are produced by multiplying the number by one, by two, by three, four, so on and so forth. So if we were listing the multiples of four, multiples of four, so we would start out with four because four times one is four, and then we would go to four times two, which would be eight, four times three would be 12, four times four is 16, four times five is 20, so on and so forth. We could keep going on forever and ever. So those would be the quote unquote multiples of four. If we were listing the multiples of six, we would have six, 12, 18. Yep, and another way of thinking about it is counting by that number. So six, then 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, so on and so forth. Yep, your multiples, yep. And so what we're finding is the least common multiple. So um, the least common multiple here. Um, so let's see what we have in common. So we have a 12 in common with four and six. Exactly, yep. So. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Oh, I remember this. So, yep, the least common multiple of four and six would be 12 because it is the smallest number that they have in common. So least common multiple of four and six would be 12. All right. That's one of the things we're doing for today. So with example one, that's all they did. So I just did example one for you. Example one, they used six and eight and they found that six and eight, the lowest common multiple that they had in common was 24. Because um, you have six, 12, 18, 24, 30. And then with eight, you have eight, um, 16, then 24. So 24 would be the lowest number that you have in common. So that's how you figure that out. So sometimes you will have three numbers. So you, it would say find the least common multiple of 24, 30, and 100. So you'd have to do a lot more counting for that. But for four and six, it's going to be a lot easier because they're pretty small numbers. Okay, let's move on to example two. Example numero deus. All right, so example two. Oh, and that's what it's saying. It's saying find the least common multiple of three, four, and six. So we're just gonna start out by counting by threes for the first one. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, so on and so forth. For four, we have four, eight, 12, 16, 20, so on and so forth. For six, we have six, 12, and I'm gonna stop right there because I have said 12 three times. So I see that there's a 12 right there, a 12 right here, and a 12 right here. So my least common multiple for three, four, and six would equal 12. So I would write LCM, least common multiple equals 12, all right? So that's, you're doing the exact same thing even when you have three numbers, even when you have three numbers. So that's what you're gonna be doing for example, um, A and B on your homework. Okay, so let's try example three when we have a little bit different type of example, yeah. Yeah. So example three, so use prime factorization to help you find the least common multiple of 18 and 14. So this part's a little bit different here. So we have 18 and 24. So 18 and 24. First off, who remembers what prime factorization is? William, what do we do for prime factorization? Yep, you are using prime numbers to find the factors of the given number. So for 18, what are two numbers that go into 18? Three and six is, would be one. Three is a prime number, so I don't have to go any farther with three. What about six would be two and three? 
Yep, two times three, and I'm just gonna write times three. But yeah, you could write two times three squared. So two times three times three would be my um, prime factorization of 18. For 24, Abby, what would be my factor tree for 24? What could I factor out there? So what times what equals 24? Yep, six times four. How? Yep, three times two, and then two times two. Good. Good. So I would list out two times two times two times three. Or three times two times two times two, or two times three times two times two. Yep. Right. You could write out um, three times two to the third. You could use exponents if you want. I am fine with that. So what we would do here. Um, is we would multiply those numbers out now. So we would take, so the prime factors of 18 and 24 are twos and threes. From a pool of um, three twos and two threes, we can form either 18 or 24. So the least common multiple of 18 and 24 is the product of three threes, or three twos and two threes. Okay, so let's write that out here. Let me erase some of this so I have some room. So I'm going to take my most amount of twos, which is over here. So I have three twos, three twos. So I'll take two times two times two. And then over here, I have two threes. So I'll take three times three. So with that, with that, you are taking the highest number that you have within each one. So you have three times three from 18, and then you have two times two times two from, um, what was it, 24. Yes, William? Yep, it's gonna be 72. So if I take two times two, that's four. Multiply that by two times three times three. Two times four is eight times three times three. And then I would take, I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna break it down a little more. Then I could take three times three, which is nine. And then I would take eight times nine, which is 72. So that's how I would break that down. You do your factor tree, and then you take the most amount of numbers that you have, which for 24, we had three, three twos, and for 18, we had two threes. So let's try another example like that one, where it'll be a little bit different. So still example three, this is gonna be an example I give you. So I'm gonna do, uh, let's do, let's do 28 and 28 and 36. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so let's break down 28. Calum, how can I break down 28? So what number times what number equals 28 besides one and 28? Yeah, you can do 14 and two. Can I break down two anymore? Uh, no. Nope, so I can break. Seven and two, yep. Yeah. Can I break down seven anymore? Nope, because it's, yep, because seven is a prime number. So I'd take two times two times seven for 28. And then for 36, Jaden, how would I break down 36? Two and six? So two times six would be 12. Are you, oh, oh, two sixes? Okay, so yeah, six times six. Good. And then I can break down the six by doing what, William? Two and three and two and three. Yep, two and three and two and three. Yep, so I would have two times two times three times three. So now, what do I do now that I have these numbers? What am I going to do with these numbers, William? Yep, so over here we have two twos, and then also over here we have two twos. So the same number of twos, so I'm just going to use two times two. And then I'm also going to use the two threes. So three times three. And then I'm also going to use this seven. So I'm using every single number in this situation. I would take two times two, which is four. 
I'm going to take 3 times 3, which is 9, times 7. So 4 times 9 is going to be 36 times 7. And I'm going to have 7 times 6, which is 42. Whoops. Yeah. And then 7 times uh, 3 is 21 plus 4, so 252. Okay, so that would be another example. Those examples are going to be the ones you're doing for letters C and D. Letters C and D. Yeah. It says mentally calculate each quotient by finding an equivalent division problem. Discuss your strategy with the class. So for F through H, you just won't discuss your strategy with the class. Yep. So, yep. Um, let's try example four now. So, example four, actually, where's that one? Yeah, let's do example four. So, example four. So, instead of dividing 220 by five, double both numbers and mentally calculate the quotient. So, instead of dividing 220 by five, double both numbers and mentally calculate the quotient. So I need to double 220 and I need to double five. So I need to multiply both by two. So 220 times two, is gonna be 440. And then five times two is gonna be 10. And then it wants me to mentally calculate the quotient. So I would take 440 divided by 10. That's one that we can do in our head, right? Because um, you're just getting rid of the zero right there because we're dividing it by 10. Yep. So you have an answer of 40 right there. Okay. So there's your mental math. You're just taking 440 divided by 10, which is something we can do in our head. That's the mental math part. So that's what um, William was talking about for letters F through H, F through H. All right, so do, 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 do. yeah, let's do example five too. Do a little more practice. This will be our last one. Example five, I have, so it says instead of dividing 220 by, oh, that's the one I just did. Instead of dividing 6,000, 6,000 by 200, First, divide both numbers by 100. First, divide both numbers by 100. And that's because they have um, two zeros each. So 600 divided by 100 would be what, Abby? 600 divided by 100. So it'd be 60 because I'm moving my decimal two places over. So I would have 60. So I'm just getting, because there's two zeros in 100, so I'm getting rid of two zeros in 6,000. So I would be left with 60. And then 200 divided by 100, what would that be, Abby, using that same method? So I'd get rid of two zeros, so what would I be left with? I'm just going to be left with two. So 200 divided by 100 is two because whenever you're dividing something by 10, by 100, by 1,000, you're just getting rid of those zeros at the end, however many zeros. So if you're dividing something by 10, you'll get rid of one zero. If you're dividing something by 100, you take away two zeros. If you divide something by 1,000, you take away three zeros. Divide something by 10,000, you take away four zeros. So you guys will be working with that a lot more when you get into um, exponents. Yes. Two hundred divided by twenty. So you would just get rid of one zero from each. So what would be twenty divided by? Wait, two hundred divided by what? 
by 20. So you just get rid of one zero from each. And you would take 20 divided by two, which is 10. Yeah, so what Kalen was asking is, what is 200 divided by 20? Since they both have a zero in common, you can take away the zero there, take away the zero there. Now you can do 20 divided by two. And which equals like 10. Divided by 1 million, you, can take off so many zeros. you can, yeah. So if you have 1,000 divided by, let's just say, 200, how many zeros can I get rid of there? Two. Yep, two of the zeros. So two zeros there, two zeros there. Now I'm just taking 10 divided by 2, which equals just 5. Half of the zeros? Nope. Nope. Because 1,000 divided by 200 is going to be 5. Uh, so this is just a little shortcut so you can do it quicker in your head. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right. That's all I have for you guys for your math. That was a little bit longer of a video today, but that's okay. You guys still have a half hour to work on that homework. I, just, I do all the example questions and do a couple of the numerical questions. Yeah.